Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 19th of January, and it's National Popcorn Day. And a big happy birthday to Dolly Parton, Jensen Button, Logan Lerman, and Marsha Thomason. Wednesday saw another day of strikes with nurses in England and Wales and teachers in Scotland walking out over pay. Thursday sees a second day of action, but with bus drivers also adding to the striking lucky dip. And as a fresh wave of rail strikes looms in February, as left General Secretary Mick Whelan said a deal to stop any further train strikes is further away than ever before. He said he was disappointed his union hadn't been able to negotiate an agreement after weeks of intense talks. I've never been in a process where people have been so underhand and deceitful, and I've been negotiating at all levels of this industry for about 38 years. Meanwhile, nurses on the picket line say misogyny has a part to play. Over 85% of nurses in the UK are women. If this was a male-dominated profession, I'm pretty sure we'd have been striking years ago and would have been getting a better starting wage. The striking nurses marched with supporters to Downing Street as further mass walkouts of NHS staff were announced for the coming weeks. And Labour leader Keir Starmer called out Rishi Sunak in PMQs over the state of the NHS. So for one week, will he stop blaming others, take some responsibility and just... I must admit, under his watch, the NHS is in crisis, isn't it? The World Economic Forum's on this week in Davos, and on Wednesday, Vladimir Zelensky gave an address via Zoom. The Ukrainian president told global leaders and industry experts the world must not hesitate to take action against Russia. It needed less than one second to start the war. The world needed days to react with first sanctions. The time the free world uses to think is used by the terrorist state to kill. His speech followed a deadly helicopter crash in Ukraine on Wednesday morning, which killed the country's interior minister and more than a dozen people, including children. Interior Minister Denis Monostritsky, who oversaw the country's police and emergency services, is the most senior official to have died since Russia invaded Ukraine nearly 11 months ago. The head of the Kyiv region police, Andrew Nebitov, answered questions on the crash. There will be an objective, comprehensive investigation of the tragedy. The investigation will have more than one version of exactly what happened today. There was some good news on Wednesday as the economy looked like it could be recovering at least a little after recent ONS figures revealed inflation has eased. Inflation, which measures the rate of price rises, fell to 10.5% in the year to December from 107 in November. But Labour's Emily Thornbury warned it's not time to celebrate just yet. It's good news that inflation's going down, but it's still the third highest that it's been for 40 years. So, you know, let's not put the bunting out yet. And Chancellor Jeremy Hunt, who stars in a painful Treasury Explainer video all about inflation, says the government remains committed to their promise, which conveniently for them is already forecast to happen. There is no room for any deviation from our central objective of the year, which is to halve inflation. This has to be our central mission. There was shock in New Zealand and around the world as Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern announced she's resigning as Prime Minister and calling a general election for October. She's been PM for five and a half years, steering the country through the COVID pandemic and events such as the Christchurch mosque attack. She said she spent the summer considering her future and just doesn't think she's got enough energy to face another term. And so today I'm announcing that I will not be seeking re-election and that my term as Prime Minister will conclude no later than the 7th of February. I know what this job takes and I know that I no longer have enough in the tank to do it justice. It's that simple. Still to come on the Smart 7, more stars move into New York's murderiest building and Danny DeVito explains why live tweeting was a mistake. Right after this. Welcome back. Wednesday night saw two football matches in two different competitions. Leeds faced Cardiff in their FA Cup third round replay, while Man United visited Crystal Palace in the Premier League. Jesse March's lead side tore into Cardiff, 3-0 up at half-time, and they led 5-0 at one point. Cardiff battled back with two late goals, but it wasn't enough, and the game finished 5-2 with Leeds through to the fourth round. Meanwhile, Man U were 1-0 up and heading for second place in the Premier League table when a late free kick saw Palace equalise. Manager Eric Tan Hag was philosophical about the draw. It, it happened. 
you can't change this anymore. And uh, just sat in the dressing room and we're looking forward and get energy. Um, look to Arsenal and we will make a proper plan. And uh, players have to make sure they are ready for that game because it's uh, a top game and, we, uh, and it's fantastic to play such games. What do you get when you cross a Twitter account with Danny DeVito? A hilarious viral tweeting sensation, that's what. Last year, he and his 39-year-old daughter Lucy starred together in the adult animated sitcom Little Demon. When the series first aired, he decided to live tweet quotes from the series. And let's just say it didn't go particularly well. The Hollywood wise guy and his daughter Lucy popped up with James Corden to explain what went down. And I just started texting lines from the show. Tweeting. But with no hashtag little tweeting, tweeting with no hashtag. You also didn't say I'm about to live tweet the episode. No, so I didn't what, do that. What your followers got was just randomly, get ready for some hot sauce. My friends were texting me, were like, is your father having a stroke? <laughs> Only Murders in the Building's back for a third season, starring Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez and Paul Rudd. But now, there's another very famous face joining the cast. Exec producer and star of the Hulu hit mystery series Selena Gomez took to social media to reveal which Hollywood legend has made the cut. This devilish actress is no stranger to Prada, but can you guess who she is? Hey guys, we're on set. Hey! What are we shooting? Oh, hi there! Season three. Right. The gang is back. Hello. Yay. Yeah. Could this honestly get any better? Uh, uh, oh, wait. Uh, well, I do think it could get a little bit better. In what way? It's Meryl Streep. They've only gone and got Meryl bloody Streep. This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Dogs.